Hi there, Francis Potter here from GitLab. We're going to talk about mono repos today. So a mono repo is a large repo. Everyone has a different definition, but usually if it's multiple gigabytes in the repo, we think of it as a mono repo. And it's called a mono repo because they often have multiple projects or very, very large complex projects all inside one Git repo. And it creates special challenges for any kind of Git hosting. Fortunately, GitLab is the best on the market for mono repos. And I'm gonna give you some of the reasons. I'll warn you up front, this is a really text heavy presentation. Um, it's a really, just a really quick summary of the things that matter. So uh, first off, what are the infrastructure components of GitLab that support mono repos. And there are five that really matter. The first one is Gitly cluster. That's our fault tolerant RPC access for Git operations. And that maximizes that Git read and write performance even with large repos. And in fact, if your repo is really large, it can have its own server all to itself so you can control the and optimize the performance to that repo. We also have GitLab Geo, which distributes Gitly and the Git operations globally. So if you have development teams in Asia or Europe or all of the above, um, you can actually move those Git operations to be located closer to those, um, those individual teams and reduce the latency of especially Git clones and pulls, fetches. Um, migration from Perforce and really any of the pre-Git source code control systems uh, is a service that we offer both our, within our professional services organization and with our partners to allow you to uh, kind of adopt all the great uh, high speed, high efficiency DevOps practices that are supported by GitLab. Uh, we also offer an open source tool called GPT, which is a load testing tool that we use to test our reference architectures, but you can also use it to test your GitLab instance and make sure that you're optimizing for performance, even for your particular mono repos that you might be uh, using. Every repo is different. And so uh, we actually recommend that you run GPT against your specific repo uh, in your specific implementation to make sure that it's maximally optimized. Uh, finally, we encourage all of our customers to look at the future and all of the initiatives that we have coming up with regard to mono repo support, like automatically offloading large files to object storage, um, incremental repository backups, partial clone and CI CD. There's a whole bunch of things coming in the future and we'd like you to be aware of them. So this is some of the infrastructure items. What about features though, the actual features of GitLab that support mono repo development? These are just a few. I mean, pretty much every feature in GitLab is optimized for mono repo support, but these are some of the ones that are particularly interesting to companies working with large repos. Uh, first, we have full support for Git LFS, which is large file storage. What that does is it takes large files and or really any kind of file that you designate and stores it in object storage rather than in Git itself. So this optimizes the performance of Git and also allows you full access to the object storage and keeps track of which files are stored in object storage and where they're stored. Um, that's particularly useful for companies in uh, maybe entertainment and gaming that have a lot of binary files or large files in their Git repos. You can actually uh, put them in object storage and it works really well. We also have partial clone support. This allows you to uh, use Git operations that don't uh, clone the entire repository. They only clone part of the repository. Uh, as you know, Git is designed so that every developer is working with a full copy of the entire history of the repo. But if it's six gigabytes, that could take a long time to clone. So maybe if somebody's only working on a part of the repo, they can do a partial clone and pull down just the part that they need to work on, make a change, do a commit, do a push, and they're good and operational without having to clone the whole thing. Okay. The parent-child pipelines and really a lot of pipeline architectures that are designed within the CI/CD part of GitLab to, uh, to kind of maximize the flexibility of the CI/CD and the pipeline architectures. So for example, you can have pipelines that call other pipelines where the separate pipelines are defined in different parts of your repo. Uh, you can also have pipelines that construct CI configuration uh, dynamically based on what's in the repo. So there really are a ton of different ways to use GitLab CI CD within a large mono repo and still have the flexibility to be able to do all the different things you might need to do depending on what kinds of changes are made. Okay, merge request approvals. 
There is a very sophisticated and configurable approach to reviewing and approving merge requests. Merge requests, of course, relate to feature branches within GitLab. And uh, this allows you to say, oh, certain kinds of files or certain sections of the repo are going to have certain kinds of approval processes, certain kinds of groups of people that have to do approval. And you can configure that and manage that at the project level and at the group level within GitLab. And finally, code owners. Um, this allows you to define who owns specific files or paths in the repository, and you can assign code owners to be approvers. So that works hand in hand with merge request approval. Uh, also just gives you an idea of who's responsible for which parts of the repo. So if there's a problem with the repo, you can easily figure out who to work on it. So thanks a bunch for paying attention. Uh, really appreciate it and uh, have a great day with GitLab.